Good morning and welcome to the Word Line. I am Elder Charmaine Ernest and I am here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I am sitting in for our visionary, Elder Barbara Trotter. And uh, she's preparing for a presentation this weekend. So we lift her up in prayer. And Father, we just ask that you would speak through us this morning, that you would present this presentation 15 minutes of sound, powerful word that you bring before us every day. And we thank you for these opportunities that you present. And Lord, we just thank you for that you would go before us, open the hearts and minds of everyone that's going to be a part of this today. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. And so today I have, uh, I'm covering for Elder Trotter and she's on the line. So we wish her uh, great success this weekend. And also I'm going to start share my screen and uh, so that we can get started here. Okay. Okay, today I've been given the assignment uh, to present from Romans chapter 14, verses seven through nine. Romans chapter 14, verses seven through nine. And so, um, the reading of God's word is as, as it says, but none of us live it to himself. None of us live it to himself and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For this, to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, came back again, that he might be the Lord, both of the dead and the living. And so as a, in the reading of our work of, of this scriptures, the very first thing that we see and uh, is in, it says for none of us. Now we know that in Romans chapter 14, we're talking about, uh, we're in the, the, second half of Romans, where it's talking about born again believers, how we should live and how we should think and how we should function as a believer. So when it says for none of us, we're talking about born again believers, okay? We're talking about born again. And we as human beings, we're all born again. I mean, as human beings, let me go back here. I wanna show you something. It says, as human beings, we are born into the world. When you look at this, you see a, a, a picture of uh, a slot that says you're born. Then you see an arrow. And that's your life from the time you were born until you got born again. Now, when we were born into this world, we were separated from the Lord. Okay, we were not saved. We were at enmity with God and, at, and because of what Adam had brought into the world. And then, disciples of Jesus get born again. At some point in your life, you accept Jesus if you choose, but some people choose not to accept Jesus and they're born and they live their whole life until they die. And, and when they die, they pay for their own sins. However, if you are born again and you are one of us, okay, then you are a disciple of Jesus and at some point in your life, you got born again. And that's when we are in Christ. We are unto the Lord. Now, for the rest of our life, okay, we are in Christ and we are one with the Lord. First Corinthians 6, 17 says that he who is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So you get born again, you live your rest of your Christian life in Christ unto the Lord, and then your death will come. When death comes, we, because we are born again believers, we know that we are going to have resurrection and we will spend eternity in the presence of God. Okay. Now I want to make this note here. Jesus, Jesus came and he was the first born from the dead. Jesus came, he lived the life that we live, okay? He didn't have to get born again because he was born already uh, uh, the son of God. However, when he, he had to die for our sins, 
He had no sin of his own, but he had to die. His death was for us. Our sins is what qualified Jesus to die. So when he died and he, he resurrected, he is the firstborn from the dead, okay? And so we look at life as a state of human existence. And death is also a state of human existence. Now, Romans 14, 7 says, for none of us live it to himself, and no man dieth to himself. So what that means is when it says for none of us, we're talking about born again believers. We live and die. We live and die alone to himself or to herself. In other words, for none of us, when it, I'm going to take this little born again section out and read it in context. For none of us live and die alone or live and die to him or herself. In other words, the scripture 14, 7 says, for none of us live it to himself and for no man die it to himself. That's when we need to understand what that's saying. Because look at Colossians 1, 27. It says, to them... God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Do you know why you don't live and die alone or, or, or live and die to yourself? Because, because you are a born again believer, Christ has put his spirit inside of you and you are not alone. You might be lonely, but you are not alone, okay? Because it's you and God are a majority. You, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And it is him in you, Christ in you, is your hope of glory. So when it, Romans 14, 7 says, for none of us live to himself and none of us die to himself. None of us born again believers, we are not alone. We live for Christ and we die for Christ. So let's look at verse eight. It says, for whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. In other words, it ain't, it, our whole existence, our whole human existence, once you get born again, you are now in Christ and you live unto the Lord and you die unto the Lord for the rest of your existence. And this is because we are the Lord's. We are his children. We are his uh, family members. We are in Christ and he's in us. Look at Galatians 2.20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Me, you, we're crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I live in this physical body. Yet not I, not Charmaine, but Christ liveth in me. And the life would I now live in the flesh, this fleshly life that you see me and you living, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. So when it says in that scripture, for whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Or whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Because whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. We are baby love. We got some powerful things happening in our lives that we live in right now because we're not living this life by ourselves. And it's verse nine, it says, for to this end, Christ both died and rose from the dead and re revived that he, Christ, might be Lord both of the dead and the living. When, when, when Jesus resurrected from the dead, he says he has all power in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Death and life all belongs to him. You know, he is, he is the Lord of, of every existing, every place. He's the Lord of the living and the dead. Look at Colossians <coughs> 1.18. It says, and he is the head of the body, the church which is the beginning, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. Preeminence, he's over everything, the living and the dead. 
you know, when Jesus, when, when Jesus went down at, after his death, he went down into the depths of, of hell and he, he retrieved the keys to death and hell. Those people that had died from Adam all the way up until Jesus's death was in that place. Either they was in the bosom of Abraham or in the place of torment. I don't know, but they was there because nobody had resurrected from the dead except until Jesus after his death. That's when they res the resurrected. But he went down there and he set captives free that was already down there. So death could not hold him. He paid for the sins of the whole world. Death could not hold him. In other words, he wrote your name off. He paid for Diane. He paid for Barbara. He paid for every one of us on here, our sins. And then when it got to his, his name, it was like, oh, oh, death all of a sudden realized we, he has no sin of his own. We can't hold him here. He has to go. He has, he can get out. He can get out of here. And that's what he did. And death, he took, he took care of that. And when he rose, they rose with him. So baby, death can't hold him. And that's why he is the Lord over the preeminence of all things. He has the power. So right now, if you want that power, if you want it, you can have it. Anybody, you go back up here. Anybody can be given an opportunity to get born again. If, you're, if you've been born and you live in your life and you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to get born again. You need to get in Christ and unto the Lord. That's what you need to do so that when you live, when you die, you know that you will be resurrected. You will spend eternity in the presence of God, be it in heaven or on earth, because there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Read your book. But the thing is, we, our God is the only, out of all the religions of the world, out of all of the people they believe in, our God is the only one that is alive today. He came, he, he was born, he died, but he came back. He resurrected. And that's the hope that you have. So if you would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat these life-changing words after me. Because they're coming from Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th and the 10th verse. And not only do you get saved, but you get made righteous at the same time. Read verse 10. It says, it, repeat these words. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. I now receive my salvation and my righteousness. I now receive the forgiveness of my sins and eternal life. I now receive that my divine mental health and physical health, thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, if you said those words for the very first time, you just got saved. It ain't about what you do, it's about what you believe. And you just believed in, in what Jesus did for you. And that brought salvation and that made you righteous right at this moment. And the scripture says that there's a party going on in heaven. The angels are rejoicing in heaven because you just got saved. You don't have to go and get saved again and again and again because the scripture says that your spirit is sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. However, for the rest of your Christian life, you need to be being transformed by the renewing of your mind. You need to begin to understand, get the mindset of what actually happened in your spirit just now. And that's why you come to the word line. That's why you go to discipleship classes so that you can begin to renew your mind and transformation because transformation has begun. And what he began today in your life, he's going to see it through no matter what. So, and, and as you, you begin to change your mind then you can change your actions. And as a result of changing your actions, you can begin to change your circumstances. So, you know, they say there's a party going on in heaven. We like to party too. I, I'm, I'm from New Orleans and we love a good party because ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. 
for the rest of your life, you begin to have a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost has come to live inside of you. He'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. So you have a blessed day in the Lord. And I'll see you on Monday again, Monday through Friday, 745 Central Time for 15 minutes on this word line. And you have a blessed day. And tell your friends about it. Come check us out. Bye-bye. Goodbye.